I don't give you. Seven. Your only decision from now on is what type of prison you want to be. What is it with this kid? <laughs> Just reminds me of me. It's, I've always loved kind of prison cell movies. I've, they've, they've really fascinated me. But this is, it was really different. I love the way that you did it, especially kind of, the, I don't want to give too much away, but I mean, kind of these conversations that they had with different people in there that, I, uh, I'm trying to say it without giving giving anything away. There's just certain <laughs> things there that this it could, they could have been flashbacks if you if you if you're with me. And um, rather than being flashbacks, they kind of they were a lot more realistic. And I I was really uh, I kind of appreciate that because otherwise it would have, I think it would have kind of pulled me out of the film maybe a little bit. So I really cool. appreciate that that side of the story. Cool, very cool. Yeah, look, it's you know it's it's whenever you're making any kind of drama and it's unfolding in the way that you need it to unfold. There's there's various. Uh, God, I mean, we've just got the loudest neighborhood in the world today. Um, you know, it, it can unfold in various ways. And yeah, to be cinematically enjoyable or artistically appreciated, you have to come up with new, not new ways, but inventive ways, I guess, in that in that particular film. And so, yeah, you know, um, I'm glad you I'm glad you picked up on that. Because some people do and some people don't, because it, it's really yeah. not on the nose to say, hey, this is what this is, you know. So, you know, yeah. it's, it's part of the story. And if you're paying attention, you get it. But I mean, without giving too much, was, was that kind of your intention? Was that, did you kind of keep it, try to keep it as grounded as possible? Was that the, the reasoning behind that? Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to do a real prison drama. You know, um, I'm, I'm a massive, I've, you know, I've, I've beaten this over the head, but I'm a massive fan of, of prison films. You know, I've got Cool Hand Luke in the background here. Yeah. Uh, you know, and Papillon and all the classics I've, I've always been fascinated with. And, um, and then, of course, I loved Bronson when it came out. I thought it was very different, and there was a, a different look at it. Hunger was a great, uh, great film in many ways, and um, but I hadn't seen anything really that that sort of. Uh, I guess Hunger was the closest thing to it. That just had that real realism, um, mm-hmm. and so. And so, by you know making a film and, and having these different diversions, you have to come up with different ways to. To, to still cement it in reality, but still have, uh, uh, you know, a narrative that's, that's film worthy. So, yeah, it was always the intent. It was always uh-huh. the intent. I mean, uh, talking of cementing in reality, um, obviously there's plenty of um, expletives exploit- in there because of, of where it is. But how, aside, from, aside from the kind of the curse words, how did you really kind of dig into what um, prisoners would be like in, in these kind of situations and what life probably is like in, 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 in these places. I mean, a ton of research, to be honest, I've, I've, um, you know, uh, I'd written a TV show that, that we got some traction for over here in the States, um, a few years back with a, a, a buddy of mine, Frank John Hughes. Um, but it was a show that I wanted to, uh, I was shooting a movie down in Louisiana. I was acting in a film. Um, I knew that, um, Angola state prison was down near where we were shooting and Angola is one of the most infamous prisons in America. Um, and, uh, it's very backwards in its thinking in a sense. I mean, it's, you know, it's set on thousands of acres and people go there. Life means life. They still have death row there. I mean, it's, you know, an awful place. Um, and the producers very kindly put in a phone call and the governing board very kindly allowed me to go up and, and right. pay a visit. And I thought, you know, I'd, I'd walk in and do an hour's tour and I, I was there all day. Um, and I saw things that perhaps an outsider doesn't see, um, nothing, uh, nothing dangerous or, or whatnot, but certainly, you know, walking me down death row, and, you know, looking yeah. at these prisoners and they're looking at me and, um, uh, just, I was fascinated by this world and, and shocked by the world. I mean, you know, being incarcerated is a hellish thing for anybody to go through. And so I wanted to really uh, grab a notion of that. And so through my research, you know, I, I just started seeing what the prison system was truly about. Um, there's a real social dilemma there. You know, there's a lot of kids going in for a long time where they shouldn't be, you know, um, mm-hmm. so. Uh, where they shouldn't be getting these long sentences, and they are. Um, 
and it's overpopulated and you know perhaps there's um there's a business angle with prisons you know a lot of prisons are going privatized and people are earning money out of yeah. incarcerated prisons and so that fascinated me and scared me and um shocked me and um sort of led me down this this path of just complete deep research um mm-hmm. the language thing is you know, I'm a, it's, it's, it is what it is now, yeah. yeah, yeah, and, just, and, yeah. Look, I, was, I was raised a working class kid, so I've, I've sort of got a little bit of that street side to me that I'm aware of, um, and I dig deep into it. But I'm also a film fan, and so you know, a lot of the shows that I, I've written over here in the States that, that we've got traction on or we've sold, you know, there's a lot of real street dialogue, if, if you want to call it, and, and people mm-hmm. think, you know, it's written by an African American guy who was raised in south central and it's not it's you know it's it's ross from port glasgow you know um and so with with this film too it was the same thing i just um you know there was a couple of americanisms that that had slipped in the original script and and the boys the actors i I was working with were great you know they'd be like i don't know if you can say that and i'll be like but it sounds good and you know with uh we'd get the 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 london twang thrown in there so good measure Bird's rough, isn't it? Makes you jumpy and shit. You got any ain't got nothing. The truth is, Frank, I'm a violent man. Two luck, star carving, prove your stones. I got iron in the lap. I would take a life like you, John McHugh. Please, man. Please, man, what? I think you got some serious decisions to make. Survive how you can. It's natural, you know, it's real. I mean, yeah. I, I, I wasn't interested in making a, a London gangster film. I wasn't interested no. in yeah. making a, you know, a fake, um, angle of you know oh okay you know it's, it, it wasn't it wasn't the film i wanted and so yeah. when i pitched it to everybody that eventually came on board you know was i i wanted to keep it as real as possible so the guys talk our guys talk and the officers talk how the officers talk and it there's uh-huh. it's definitely a prison language that is perhaps slightly different to the outside world and so i wanted to infuse that a little bit and have that in there yeah a lot of the especially the american kind of prison set movies they they obviously have the kind of the dirty dealings that go on behind on kind of the, the prison prison system but it's usually very frivolous it's very kind of wow these dirty guys they're going to get their comeuppance and whatever but this is this really i felt that like you had a really strong social commentary that you wanted to, to get across from the film now was that something that was from the outside or was that something that kind of came came into the script once you'd kind of seen the going what was going on in, in the actual prisons themselves no, that was that was absolutely the the, the origins of it. I I, right. I wanted to prison is not a nice place, you know, and and I really wanted to have that, um, you know, it's a dark space, and and people that go there, there's there's a a mental payoff that happens to prisoners, you know, um, that becomes like a, talk about people's walls going up. I mean, you know, severe severe walls and boundaries arise within these these uh these folks that are incarcerated rightly and wrongly and some of them you know are are perhaps innocent or i mean we even say in in the film you know there's some people that should just be slapped on the wrist and you know told to do cleanup duty on the m25 but instead they they throw them in in a cell with a very dangerous criminal um and so yeah and i was really conscious of that I was really conscious of of that's where I wanted this story to go. I wanted it to really be bleak because it's not a fun place. And and you know by setting up the film in in the cell for the entirety of the movie, I also wanted to have that feeling for an audience to sort of have an inkling of how it would feel to be stuck inside a prison. You know, mm-hmm. and that's not fun. It's you know it's claustrophobic and it's it's awful and. Hopefully it deters anybody. I mean, I don't think you can watch a violent man and, and for one second feel that it glamorizes anything about the prison system. No, 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 no. completely the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that I was something that really fascinated me as well is is kind of um, Craig's just kind of is, is, is the mindset he's got there. He's kind of like he he accepts and he, he's kind of he's, he's he's going through this kind of process of repentance now of what he's done, but at the same time um, he kind of he accepts it and he kind of, he just wants to get on with life and kind of prove himself and, and kind of make sort of do better in prison rather than kind of anything outside. Well, he kind of wants to shut himself off, which was kind sure. of, 
it was kind of a strange experience for me to kind of realize that he wants to do good here because he kind of he, he, he appreciates that that's this is his life now there's nothing else he can do about it so th this is where he wants to do good rather than kind of being able to better off people that maybe he's done done bad deeds to outside of the prison cell not without giving too much away well it's where he's comfortable you know when you become institutionalized there is, I mean, how often have we all heard that story where somebody, you know, gets let out of prison after a long stretch and they just don't know how to Yeah, they, they want to get back in if they can do, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, because there's a comfort level there, strangely, you know, and yeah, you know, what Craig does brilliantly as well is, you know, how he transformed himself into Steve, is Steve knows that. Steve knows that this is the place where actually he's the head of the table, you know, he... he he has a life and it's not about being a daddy in prison. It's not about being a top dog. It's, it's not no. about. Yeah. I mean, what really hit me, sorry to interrupt you, is that he wants to leave a legacy in, in the prison. That's what he said. Those were his words. Yeah. yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and he does, you know, I mean, that comes with a big mark of respect. The, the other inmates all respect Steve. Uh, they know who he is. They know what he's, he's capable of. Um, and just the fact that he owns that. And, um, you know, even the conversation he has with, with the character I play, he says, I, I, I get it. You know, you guys out there understand what your life is, and that's okay with me. It's okay that I'm the one in here. I know how to survive this. I know how to live this. This would kill any of you, but I know how to deal with it. You know, and yeah. I thought that was fascinating because it's true. There's there's a lot of these these folks that are inside. You know, that of of just that's that's their life, and they're actually almost happy with it in a weird way. Can we rule out another attack? I'm worried. It isn't about his safety, and it isn't about yours either. It's about theirs. It's cousin's a ghost. It's all I got. I'd rather they kill me than have them push my family around. I don't, I don't want to leave you without talking about a little bit about the dynamic that you created there between the two kind of lead, lead cast members, between Craig and Stephen. Yeah. Were those the two actors that you had in mind when you kind of you'd written it? Were, were, did you kind of, were they were your first picks? Or what was the reason reasoning behind those two ending up? They were absolutely the first picks once we once we got going, once the train started going. But no, right. the, the original script, we we're actually going to shoot it in Los Angeles originally right. uh, as a as a London film, you know. With, with oh, it's a London film, but over there. All right. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm sort of glad that we talked ourselves out of that and decided to shoot it in London. I think I think it worked. Uh -huh. So once we were over there, you know, um, Craig, everybody knows Craig, you know, everybody knows what he brings, um, and, and and he he doesn't mind me saying this, uh, you know, we also know that there is a certain taste factor that goes with that, and so we had decided early on, look, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it a little bit differently, you know, I'm going to take him out of his comfort zone, um, he agreed to it, he got yeah, he's, I think he seems to love that lately, the last few films he's yeah. done, I mean, I mean, he mentioned a few of them, that he's kind of, he's been well, because physically been, sick because of things that he's, he's actually put himself through, but on purpose, yeah. Actor. You know, yeah. and he's a really good, good actor. And so because of that, I think, uh, and we're all guilty of this in a way. I've done it as well. I've done jobs and perhaps, you know, I look at it and go, oh, maybe, you know. Um, but the truth is, he's never been bad. So, you know, I knew he was going to be electric in this. I knew he was going to be able to handle this material. And it just sort of boiled down to a trust between us. And, and I told him, you know, I'll take you out of your comfort zone and go with me. Trust me on it. You know, we'll, we'll probably get rid of, you know, things that you usually lean on. That's not the film we want to make, you know. Um, and I put myself in that category. You know, this is not Green Street mm -hmm. Hooligans. You know, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to make that film yeah. as much as I love my involvement in Green Street. But we didn't want Rise of the Foot Soldier. We didn't want Green Street. We didn't want that uh, London geezer movie. That was yeah. never our intent. And so from day one, I was like, this is all down to casting. And, um, you know, that was my one angle, my one deal with uh, with the producers was I, I I get final say on casting. I mean, that's, you know, imperative to me. And so I brought in friends, you know, wonderful Warwick Thompson, uh, Zoe Tapper, you know, Zoe played my wife in a movie that I actually mm -hmm. did with Ulrich years before. Ulrich directed me in uh, his directorial debut. And so I had, I had family, you know, coming yeah. in and, and helping. Um, and young Stephen was, you know, a find because the family that I went to help were the casting directors, Suzanne Smith and Sarah Travis, who um, I've known Suzanne for 20 years. She didn't cast me in Band of Brothers, but um, 
the American side did, but through the American casting directors, I got to meet Suzanne after the show. Right. We became great friends. And so when I, I called her, you know, when we were getting up and running, and I said, look, I know this isn't your usual fare. I know you're a very high brown. Um, if you can, you know, if I can, if I can put that friendship calling card on the table. And she had uh, seen my film that I wrote before called About Us, yeah. which is a devastating love story. Mm -hmm. um, she, uh, she saw that and said, listen, you know, I'll, I'll be more than happy. So her and Sarah came on board. And they found us, Stephen, you know, they brought us in. Uh, we kept it pretty small. You know, we're, we weren't bringing in hundreds of people. We wanted to be a specific amount of people per character. And they brought Stevie in and, uh, you know, his self tape came in. And like everybody's tape, we said, OK, now let's get you in the room. You know, tapes are sort of tough to, to judge and, and yeah. uh, direct. You can't obviously direct them. So um, he came in the room and he's just a... Uh, a lovely, lovely lad, and he's got chops. And again, you know, um, I, I got him and Craig together and they started hitting it off. And I never wanted it to be a father-son story. You know, it's yeah. not about a teacher and a pupil. We've all seen that, you know. Um, Steve, Steve's character, Marcus, has to earn that right. You know, he has to earn the, the conversation from Steve, if you notice. I mean, you know, they, they don't talk to each other for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so getting them together, they're, they're magic. Uh -huh. I mean, you said they, they don't speak to each other for a long time. That, that, that first bit must have been quite, I mean, that's, that's quite unique. I've never seen something quite like that in a film before where there is conversation, but it's kind of internal dialogue. That must have been quite complicated to, not just to, just to, to direct, but to write as well, no? Imagining how yeah. that's going to play out later on, no? And when you actually film well, look, it. I, I mean, I do things slightly unconventionally and, and sometimes... No, no, all the better for it, but I'm just, I'm just asking kind of how the process, how yeah. the process yeah. works, yeah. No, sure. I mean, that's what I'm saying, though. It's like, because I do this, you know, it's sort of slightly unconventional. I mean, you know, listen, some, some of the press love it. Some of them lean in because it's not conventional, you know? Um, you know, I think somebody actually said that, the fact that they didn't talk or whatever, but that was absolutely on purpose. Because to me, I was yeah. like... I've never seen that in a film. I want to do that in a film. The lead role doesn't speak until, you know, 10, 15 minutes into the picture. Yeah. And I'm like, because that's what prison is. You, you yeah. sit in silence a lot of the time. And it's not just, you know, oh, hey, mate, hey, welcome. You know, hey, come mm -hmm. on, sit down. I mean, yeah. it's, you know, it's just not. It's another, it's another bed that's getting filled. This kid could mm -hmm. be gone in two days. He could be dead in a day. He could be dead. You know, you don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So... There's no, it, it's not real life. You're not meeting somebody in a, in a gym or a coffee shop and becoming pals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I really wanted to, to sort of focus on that. And the internal dialogue of Steve was just, again, a, 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 different, a different angle to, uh, to go out with, you know. Uh, yeah, no, brilliant. So, I mean, just to finish off then, obviously, this is your first film as a director. Mm. Uh, you, obviously, you said before you'd written this romantic film before. This is your second one that you've you've written, but this is the first one you directed. Was there a specific reason why you decided that it was it was time to direct and, and specifically this film? Yeah, uh, two reasons really. One was um, when I first put it together. Uh, you know, financiers were talking about me having it be a vehicle for me, um, and I just. I knew I'd be the biggest pain in the ass for any other director because I just had so many ideas and so many like visions of, of the flavor I wanted. You know, I, I definitely had like a taste and a tone. And, and I was like, if, if, I, if I get anybody else to do this, I'll just be annoying because, you know, yeah. like, oh, you know, I really yeah, want to good do book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, And with About Us, I, I had such a strong voice in the edit, uh, you know, um, and I've been around, I'm very lucky, you know, I mean, I've, I've watched amazing directors. I've been around huge Hollywood directors, you know, mm -hmm. Spielberg, Hanks, yeah. Robert Zemeckis, uh, yeah. you know, wonderful directors. And then I've been around some amazing British directors, Stefan Schwartz and, you know, the like. And it's um, just been around them. I, I, I was never sort of standing there watching, studying. Just rubs uh, off on you, yeah. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, because yeah. I was I was recently speaking to the director of Boiling Point, who's also in your film as well, course, and he yeah. said he said he said a very and similar I, similar yeah. thing, similar thing to me. Yeah, it's a fantastic film as well. Yeah, and yeah, he said yeah, exactly yeah. the same. He said, I mean, he he just he didn't feel the confidence, but it all just rubbed off, and they were like, "You've got to go for it." Yeah, and he went yeah, for it. Yeah, I mean, it was a little like that, and I don't know what Phil's Phil's experience was because we we sort of didn't 
chat about that because whenever we see each other, we just want to goof off and laugh and just, you know, right. talk about all, all the good times that we've had. Um, but uh, yeah, for me, it was like somebody asked me, you know, were you nervous? And I was like, I really wasn't. I, 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 was, I was very well prepared. Mm -hmm. um, my DP, Stefan Kupik, is a dear friend of mine. He's shot me as an actor twice now in, in two right. films. Um, and, uh, and I just knew his visionary style would fit with mine. I could just throw any idea at him and he sort of embraced it. And I think he loved that because, you know, we were being again, unconventional, you know, I don't do a lot of wide shot, two shot over the shoulder, you know, yeah. I, I play around a lot, you know, with focus yeah. and, and half screens. Upside and, down shots and yeah, all these yeah, different things. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and he was with me, you know, I, I want to say a million percent, but I know that's not even a real thing. A hundred percent. It was just, exactly with, it's just no matter what, what I, what craziness. What I you threw at him. Right? Went with it, yeah. Yeah. And then, and likewise, you know, he would say, Hey, how about we do this? Is this a little, and I was like, let's go. Let's absolutely yeah. get onto it. You know? Um, and so, yeah, it was, uh, the reason for doing it was, was, was that I didn't want to be a, a pain in somebody's neck. Um, and then, Secondly, Bart, uh, one of our producers, is also a Banner Brothers guy. So, um, you know, yeah, right. yeah, I know he's family, about, yeah. his family, and he, uh, he, you know, we talked for a little bit. They'd just done villain, and he was like, "Look, why don't you take a stab at this?" You know, and I said, "Sure, all right, let's go." Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. it was literally like over, over, uh, you know, a, a Caesar salad in Sloan Square, it sounds so posh, but you know, we really do live the posh life. Um, <laughs> over, over a salad in Sloan Square and, and we said, yeah, come on, let's go and do it. And, and bless them all, they all, you know, sat back and allowed me to, to go and, 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 and make what I made. And that's why I've got to say, hand on heart for me, I made the film I wanted to make, you know? Uh -huh. So I hope people appreciate it. And if they do, that's fantastic. But I, or, I have to be able to literally just walk around and go, I made the film I wanted to make. Oh, I wanted to get out there. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, you said that that's it was your first stab. Do you think this will be your first stab or do you think there'll be various stabs very much like uh, the character we see, <laughs> we see in the film? <laughs> um, good player words. Good player words. Um, <laughs> Not yeah, very nice, yeah. but yeah. Again, again, who knows what the future holds? I mean, I've, I've you know, I, I bleat on about this. I mean, I'm an actor first. Um, right. I, probably write second and directing is is third or producing is probably third and directing is maybe fourth you know um that's how it's been thus far would i do it again absolutely um you know probably probably my own stuff uh there's definitely a a, a flavor there there's definitely a tone you know even if you watch uh about us and, and a violent man together, you know, one's about love and one's about hate, mm -hmm. but there's totally, there are, the, yeah, there are yeah, there's things in there, yeah, there's something similar, you know, even though, you know, Stefan directed it, uh, bless his heart. He knew I had a loud voice in it and he was absolutely open to all of that. And so, you know, we sort of developed that together. And, and so, yeah, I mean, I had a lot of fun. It was a blast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brilliant. So yeah, and one more, and obviously it's a big week for you this Friday, obviously you've got this coming out in the UK, but you've also got a great big series coming out on Apple. Uh, we do suspicion. Yeah. Suspicion. Yeah. You must be really excited about that as well. No, I'm absolutely stoked about it. It's, um, you know, uh, again, I, I repeat this often, but it's not my show. I pop up and I give a bunch of information. And I disappear. So it was the easiest gig in the world for me, but I shot in London, New right. York, and LA. <laughs> So it was like that we literally flew everywhere and would shoot in these beautiful, it was almost it was very similar actually for me when I did 24 in this. I mean, I'm, I'm in suspicion way more than I was at 24, but um, uh -huh. I just shoot in these fabulous, you know, five star hotels and resorts because all my stuff's with Uma Thurman uh, and right. uh, Noah Emmerich. So I, I don't interact with anyone right. else. It's, yeah. it's just Uma and Noah. And so the three of us were just like, you know, we'd be on like these, you know, penthouse suites in the middle of uh, of Manhattan, you know, and the views of New York City. And I'm like, how did this, how did we get this gig, you know? And and some of the kids on the show are sort of running around the doldrums of, you know, of South London and the grime and the cold and, you know, and we're just shooting in these gregarious, uh, you know, 
mansions and, and hotel plazas. So I, I had a ball. So that comes out yeah. February 4th as well. Yeah, it's a big day, actually. I didn't think about that. Yeah, it's a big day for you. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that'll be like watching your, you pretty much like watching a holiday home video, no, when, when it comes on for you, no, yeah. Yeah, no, I think I think I'll disappear. Go have a bite to eat and a and a drink, and let others watch it. Um, but uh, no, it's been. Listen, I, I I don't take it lightly. I'm I'm no, extremely not, yeah. humbled that I I get to work and and I'm so lucky and grateful and blessed and all of that jazz. And to have two of my films out in my in my home country within a matter of weeks is really just like I'm so I'm so grateful for it. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Well, I'm grateful for your time as well. Thank you so much for your time, Ross. I really appreciate it. Wish Me you the too, best man. of luck with both, with the series and the film. And I hope to uh, speak to you again sometime soon, whether it be an acting project, directing project, producing project, or whatever, whatever, next, Thanks, whatever comes next. All right. All pleasure. the best. Have a good day. Nice to speak to you. Cheers then. Bye now.